Okay, so this is the second uh, AP Computer Science Principles Practice Quiz for Decision Making. So, um, let's start off. Um, consider the following code segment. The code segment is meant to execute in such a manner that grades are assigned as follows. Um, 0 to 69F. Let me just... <coughs> 069F, 70-79C, 80-89B, 90-100A. So if it's less than 70, it's an F. So that looks good. Else if it's great, now we this is where we got to say average is equal to some stuff to test this. Okay, so I don't know. Let's say average is 95. So else if it's greater than 70, it's a C, and then you're done. So... That doesn't work. How about 85? Is it greater than or equal to 70? Yes. So that, you know, this doesn't work right. Um, for which values of average does the code segment display the correct letter grade? So we know that that doesn't work. How about 75? So average is uh, less than, nope. So it's greater than, so it's a C. So that works. Uh, 65. Uh, is 65 less than 70? That's an F. That's what it intended it to do, so that's okay. So it looks like um, for all values, no. For averages less than 70, no, because we, we, that we proved that right here. For less than 80, hmm, yes. For less than 90, uh, 85 is less than 90, and we didn't get that, so... Um, that's not correct. There are no values, and we found that two of them do. So your answer is C. Two. Um, consider the following code segments. <coughs> so again, um, let's see here. For which values of the average are they the same? So again, we'll have to say average is, I don't know, 95, 85, 75, and 65, and then test all of them. So if it's greater than 90, you got an A. Now look at this. If it's greater than 90, you got an A. If it's greater than 80, you got so see what I'm saying? So now it's an a B. So this would print, if you got 95, it would print that, it'd print that, it'd print that, and it, uh, and it wouldn't print that. Um. <laughs> Excuse me, sorry. Um, so this is a good reason why you want to do this and not a bunch of if statements because this would print all this if it's greater than 90 it would just print that and that's okay okay so that's not the same for which values will segment one and two have the same output so 95 doesn't work okay so let's look at 85 85 would just print that right it wouldn't print this because 85 is not greater than 90 and 90, 85 is greater than 80, so it would print that. So with this one, 85 would print this and it would print this um, and it would not print that or that. So 85 doesn't work. Okay, so let's try 75. 75, that's good. 75, that's good. Okay, so... That's okay. How about 65? That does. And it, that does. So for all values, no. For less than 70, yeah, but also, so it, it needs to be greater than 70, right? Because that one works, that one works, and that one works. Less than 90, we proved that. That doesn't work. So again, less than 80 works because 75, okay, so... That's how I went through that. So your answer is C there. <clears throat> okay. Let's see here. Where are we at? Three. Okay. Um, 
Consider the, the Boolean expression this A or B or B for which of the following conditions the expression 2. Um, well, whenever they're both true, that works, right? Um, whenever both A is true and B is true. That's correct. A is not true. Wait, 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 wait. I think I read this wrong. A is true or B is true. Here, let me let me go through this again. Let me get just okay. Whenever both whenever A is true or B is true. So if that's true, then the whole thing is true. If B is true, that's true and that's true. So that's fine. Whenever both A is true and B is true, so they would both be true, that's fine. Whenever both A is not true and B, sorry, I read that wrong. B is not true, so not that. So your answer is what, B? The Boolean expression this. Okay, I'm, in a minute I'm gonna show you De Morgan's Law Sheet, which should help with this, but this is equivalent to, it's equivalent to not A and not B. So your answer is E. Okay, let me show you guys De Morgan's Law, the cheat sheet for this real quick. All right, so, um, and you know what, I'm gonna close this and I'm gonna put this in here. Okay, so this is equivalent to this and you know, this is equivalent to that, okay? So you guys can look at this I don't think this is going to be too important in this class, but it's just something to think about how does the not distribute through and how it changes up the symbols, okay? So what's kind of different, like you guys memorize this left side, but you could be given that side and you'd have to figure out that this is equivalent to that right there as well. So I don't know. We'll see. Uh, I, there's just not a lot with this, but there could be a little bit, all right? So I might just put this up on your, you know, in, in, in one of your things in your weeks to look at for this week. <coughs> okay, so again, if we were to do this and distribute it, it'd be not a or not B, so five is D. Okay, when the last, so for this next one, a software engineer uses the nested conditional for the opera, for the online mapping software. So here's your pseudocode. When lat is 37.5 and LNG is negative 131.2, what will be the value of direction? So uh, is 37 and a half greater than 38? No. So we go down to here. Is it greater than 38? No. So we go down to this if statement and else. Is it less than yes and is negative 131 um, point 0.2 less than negative 1? No. Nope. This is less than that. So we skip that. Then we go into here. If it's less than and, yeah, it's greater than. So your answer for 2 is D. Again, you're going to want to go through each of these. And don't get screwed up by something stupid with, you know, use your, if negative numbers confuse you, you know, look at, make like a timeline and go on the timeline, 131.2. And, you know, right there. And then do 134. So this is greater than that so that's why you know I've got that being greater than that okay so um, your answer for six is D okay this is a fun one I like this one so seven an indie game developer is making a grid-based game in a programming uh, programming logic to randomly spawn monsters. 
Okay, so the following code. So the row can be a random number, one, two, or three. And the column can be a random number, three, or four. So this is your row, and this is your column. Okay, monster row column. The procedure monster draws the monster in a five by five grid where the first parameter represents the horizontal. So these are rows, row one, two, three, four, five, and this is the column, column one, two, three, four, five, okay? So our rows can be uh, row, row one, two, and three, and column can be th three and four. So row right there, boom, boom. So you know, this is where they kind of, this is where they intersect. Okay, and then which one looks like this? D, okay? So row one, two, three, column three, four, okay? Eight. <coughs> okay, this one's kind of hard, and you have to use some logic and reason to it. A game developer is working on a basketball playing game. This uh, this incomplete code segment simulates a player taking a shot. If this is true, then the shot made and they score, else they miss. The developer wants to give the player a 75%, okay, a 75% chance of making the shot. Which of these can replace, so random number. Um, so again, random number, um, so 75%, so you need, you need to give, the, allow them to have three out of four, or in this case, 75 out of 100, okay? So if we say it's less than three, that means one or two. So that's only half, that's two out of four. Um, this one is three, out, this is one, two, and three. So that's three out of four. Um, uh, this would be your 75 out of 100. This would be 1 through 74, which is only 74 out of 100. So that doesn't work. So D doesn't work. Uh, A doesn't work. Uh, this being equal to 75, that would be a 1 out of 100 chance. So that doesn't work. And uh, one, 1 through 4 if it's equal to 3, so that's just 1 out of 4 shots, so that's only 25%. So your answers here are B and C. There are two answers. You need to make sure you guys are reading those, okay? So 8 is B and C. Um, 9. So let's see what this one does says, digital artists are writing a program to draw a face. This is the part of the code that draws the eyes and pupils. So it looks like it's making an eye uh, that's a random size 5 to 20. So this is your... Uh, pupil size. So circle... Okay, so this is your eye size right here, and then inside is your pupil, okay? So we're going to draw two circles. So it would draw, you know, one, two, and then it would do um, two of the pupils in there, okay? So these are your, this, is, this is your eye section, and this is your pupil section, okay? So I randomly selects... 5 to 20, okay, so 5, 6, 7, 19, 20, and so that's your eye, and then your pupil size, pupil would be 2, 3, 4, and 5, because that says uh, 2 through 5, 
So the code relies on circle procedure from a drawing library, which it accepts four parameters. Fill color, so white, black, position, X and Y, and then the diameters. Okay. Um, which of these best describes what his program can draw? Choose one answer. Okay. Two equally sized eyes with a minimum size of five pixels and a maximum size. So maximum isn't 19, it's 20. Okay. Um, two. Equally, uh, two equal size eyes ranging in size, a maximum of five, that's okay. And a, uh, mi sorry, minimum size of five, maximum size of 20, that's okay. And the pupil min two, okay, so that, that's good. So let's check these other ones. A minimum of six, that's not true. The minimum is five here. Uh, and max 20, that doesn't work. And this is three to five, so that doesn't work. So no on that. D, minimum of six, so that doesn't work. Max of 19, it's 20, that doesn't work. And that should be two, and should be five. So D doesn't work. Whoops, D doesn't work. So your answer is B on nine. Okay. 10, a web developer is creating an online lottery. Okay, this is kind of the same as eight. So anytime you're doing lotteries or game chances, so they want a 3% chance. Okay. Okay, so there may be multiple. So let's check for this. So 3% chance. So one through 90, one through 100 greater than 97. So that anything greater than 97, that'd be 98. 99 and 100, that's 3 out of 100, so that's 3%. Then you got, here, I'm just going to draw some lines. B, you got less than 3, so you got 1 and 2. Those only 1 and 2 are less than 3, so that's a 2 out of 100 chance, which is 2%. So that's wrong. We want to have a 3% chance. <coughs> C is greater than or equal tonight, so 97, 98, 99, and 100. That is 4, which is 4 out of 100, so that's 4%, so that doesn't work. Um, that one works, that one doesn't work. Less than or equal to 3 would be 1, 2, or 3 is less than or equal to 3. That's a 3% out of, or 3 out of 100 just three percent so a and D work on that and let's see here a written program write a class that sets a value variable to the smallest of three variables in numbers pass into a mutator method also return the smallest number in an accessor method. Okay, so this would look like this. So I'm going to say my class is public class smallest of three. And I want a mutator method that sets the smallest. So um, I'm just going to make an int called smallest. And public uh, void set smallest. And I'm going to accept an int num1, int num2. And int num three. Okay. And I don't know. Then I'm gonna do a public uh, int get smallest. 
I'm gonna return my smallest. Okay, hopefully I've got enough room here too. So let's do this. So, so if we got three numbers, we got you know. <coughs> I would think about like think about a stick, right? You got a stick here, a stick here, and a stick here. How do you know which one's the large or the the largest or the small? Let's do the smallest stick. Well, you got to compare this stick to this stick. Which one's smaller? This one. And then you got to compare this stick to this stick. And so that one's the smaller of the sticks. Okay. So, but you don't know the order of them. It could be like in that order. You know, it could be like in this order. Okay, so you know when you when you're comparing these, you got to compare this one to this one, then this one to this one, um, and then you got to keep your smallest one what, and make sure that that's assigned to the smallest variable. Okay, so the way I do that is I'd say, you know, if if num one is less than num Two, then I would say the smallest is currently equal to num one. No, 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 wait, 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 wait. That's not right. So if num one is less than num two, then we got to compare it. Sorry about that. Uh, we got to compare it to num three. And that's where I would do. Um, if then my smallest is equal to num one else the smallest is equal to num three. Okay. Okay, so look at this. One is less than two. If that's true, then if one is less than three, then one is the smallest, else three is less three is the smallest. Because remember, one is less than two. Okay. And then we gotta do another one here. And we gotta say if, and I'm gonna probably run out of room, if um, num two is less than num three. Oh crud. I didn't line this up properly. Else, if num two is less than num three, then smallest is equal to num two. Uh, else Ugh, this is bad this is real bad I can just say smallest equals num 3 Ugh, that's bad either way you should be able to kind of go through this and um, there'd be like a closing like right there afterwards so if num1 is not less than num2, then we got to check to see else right here. And, and uh, this would line up right there. There would be one there to close that too, even though I can't get it in. Uh, else, if num2 is less than num3, then the smallest is num2. Else, num smallest is num3. So, um, again, that's kind of bad, but I wrote it out. But it is the answer is, you know, at the bottom here somewhere. There you go. So anyway, this video is done.